guys, welcome back. It's not long till Christmas now. How you've got all your stuff sorted. So this morning I've been messing around with, do you remember this? Um, well, it doesn't look anything like it looked before, but basically this is my, my heater. Um, there isn't even the heater part in it. This is really well planned, this video. Here we go, here's the heater. So this is the heater that I made um, for the Twizzy so that you could basically, you know, keep, keep a bit toasty when you're kind of going out and about. It runs off batteries. It doesn't run off anything in the car. It's just purely running off batteries. So this is like a, um, a 4S, 25 amp hour, litre Carla cells in here, nicely wrapped up with like gaffer tape, nice and professional. And on the other end here, you've got a little meter and if you can see that, it's basically like one of those little D-Rock um, meter things. And there's a shunt in there so you can actually measure the current and all that sort of stuff. Now up until now, I haven't had a BMS in there. What I've been doing is I've actually been managing the um, the cell voltages manually by using this connector and then plugging it into the into this charger basically, which is you know the most sensible thing to do to avoid any kind of like overcharging and all that sort of stuff. But I've found that something strange happened in here the other day um, in this box, um, and the fuse holder that I had. I think it basically just melted. I think it was only rated for like 15 amps or something. I'm probably pulling like 25 for it. So it melted and something really strange happened where it cut the power and then the power came back. And then as soon as I put a load on it, it went again. So I'm thinking maybe the fuse might have just split, might, might have had a fracture in it, something like that. Anyway, it, it's a weird one. So you always come, no matter how many things that you do with this stuff, you always come across stuff that's like, you know, you just don't expect. Um, and it, when you open the box, you're just like, oh, I know what that is, you know, I know what that is, it's a connection or something like that. It never will be. It'll always be the thing that you least expect. So what I've gone and done now is, I had this BMS knocking around for a little while. Um, and this is a 4S 30 amp BMS, so it is a little bit close to the line for this, but um, I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. I've wired it all up. I've made this little adapter lead here, um, you know, to just connect it. Everything seems okay, it seems to be working. I haven't tested discharge on it yet. I've tried charging briefly through here just to see if it actually charges and it, and it does. So what I need to do is just test this and just test charging and also discharging. The heater at the moment just plugs in by these big plugs here. So you've just got another one on the other end of there, which isn't great because it means you've got to snap the connectors together and stuff like that. But I need to find a bigger switch really. This thing's really good. I mean, it kicks out 400 watts and it probably lasts for like an hour or something. So it's a really good little, little box of tricks. Um, for like kind of just heating small, very, very small spaces. Obviously 400 watt isn't gonna, you know, do a, do a whole, I mean, it'd probably do this shit actually if you left it on for a while. Um, but because it's so well insulated, but that's the thing. In the Twizzy, it's very, very small space. It's not very well insulated, but because it's so small, you can get like localized heat and stuff just to warm you up a bit. So anyway, I'm gonna start charging this up and see what happens. Um, it'd be great if I can get this, you know, if this all works because it means then it's gonna turn off at the proper um, voltage. You know, if one cell goes lower than the others, it's gonna turn off. It, BMS is just gonna look after everything. You must have a BMS. I mean, it just, it's just too difficult to manage without one um, at long for longevity. If you're just testing stuff, fine, but you've got to have a BMS because it just, it will just go wrong eventually. You will either wreck the pack or you'll just, something, something bad will happen. A lot of people slag BMSs off, and I can see why, because you never know what they're doing. You don't know what's going on on this, you know, on this circuit here, which is why we've started doing the kind of the Bluetooth BMSs, but for something this small, it's just it's just not worth it. Eventually, I think maybe these, even these small BMSs will have some way of connecting to it, because it's so cheap now to put like a little Bluetooth chip or something on there. And that just makes the world a difference if you can start configuring things. So I think over the next couple of years, it will change, definitely. Anyway, enough waffle, let's get it on charge. Now this is set to charge at about 10 amps, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna monitor the temperature of this, um, this BMS just to make sure nothing fries. It hasn't got a separate charge input and discharge input, this one, it's actually like a, I'll show you. It's just simple, the same wires are used for discharge as they are for charging, so this just makes it a lot easier, even easier to wire up. Right, I just gotta run a little errand. Don't worry, I didn't leave the battery on charge. I turned it off before I come out. Oh yeah, another thing. You guys, there's been a few of you guys on the comments saying about um, the last video, or the video before last, where I did the, the, um, the kind of range extender thing. Um, for this, which I'm still kind of working on. There's been a load of comments saying, um, why don't you just connect it to the battery? Why don't you connect it directly to the battery? 
I don't think a lot of people realise that from proper electric cars, and this is a proper electric car because it has all of the same electronics as, you know, like the bigger cars, you can't just parallel lithium batteries together when you've got BMS, you've got CAN bus communication between the BMS and the charger, you know, that's built into the car. You've got like, um, an, obviously like a, a management system as well, just like a normal car. So like the whole thing is, is proper, properly managed. Um, as you can see, you know, you've got a box like this. That's why that thing's possible. Because the electronics in this car actually handle everything. You know, you can't just connect a battery to it. There's also contactors as well, which handle like high power switching. So there's a lot to think about. You know, we'll be going down that route eventually, um, but it probably make more sense to actually just build a bigger battery. So this kind of range extender is a bit like a, a stepping stone. Um, and it also makes it easier to just take it out of the car and use it for other things as well or use it in multiple cars if you want that um, capability and some pe other people have said about efficiency yeah okay there are some issues with efficiency um, you know if you're stepping up you know a voltage to then step it back down again it, that's not really that sensible um, but the good thing is you're not stepping it up that far in this system because it's a 72 volt inverter anyway I better concentrate on driving Right, I'm back guys, and I've been charging the uh, the battery. So we're at 16.8 volts now, um, and it's put in nearly 10 amp hours. So that's looking pretty charged. Now I need to check what's actually happening on the, you know, if the, if the balancing is actually right, because we don't know, you know, what the voltage, the individual voltage of each bank of these are. I'm hoping nothing's warm. This has been going a little while. I've been keeping an eye on it. There's been no smoke or anything yet. Well, I want to check the cell voltages anyway. Good thing about this BMS is it has pads for the actual individual cells. So you can use the pads instead of this, this connector here, but it, it just means it's easy to monitor. You can stick a, a probe across these two and let's see. Get my new fluke meter out. This is an early Christmas present, this one to myself. Right, so cell number one, I've got positive on battery one and I've got the negative jammed in the charger. So that's showing 4.2. So that is getting there. I mean, you don't want to go much higher than that, obviously, but right, false alarm, it's nothing to worry about. My stupidity, putting one of the probes in the charge is obviously gonna, you know, get rid of the, um, the internal resistance or whatever of the wires and everything else. So it's actually fine. So that when it's, it's 4.17, it's quickly going up to 4.8 when the, when the charger kicks in. So, you know, they're all around 4.18. So this charger is obviously now just going into its last phase where it's dropping back the um, the current. So yeah, I think we're good to go. I, I mean, I could just leave it and see, you know, when it actually cuts off, but, and if some balancing, you know, takes place, but I think I'm gonna box it back up and then, um, yeah, and then we'll do, we'll do another test. We'll do a discharge test on it as well um, and see what's happening. But yeah, that was weird that, it can be kind of, and we kind of worried for a minute. So yeah, always make sure you measure the voltages, you know, as close as you can to where the, where the cells are, because obviously, yeah, connecting it to the charger is just stupid, really. Well, right, let's just check these voltages then before I put it all back together. So 4.168, that's the first cell. Um, 4.175, cell two. Um, cell three is 4.175, those two are on the nail. And I'm not going to do this. I'm going to have to get in that little break me insulation a bit. Nice sharp probes on this one. 4.172. So that's pretty well balanced actually. I've been um, balanced charging it every charge. So I mean, you know, you would expect it, but that, I mean, that takes forever doing it that way. Um, but using the BMS, yeah, quite impressed with that. Right, it's not the neatest thing in the world, but I managed to sandwich it all back in the box. So what I want to do now is I'm going to test it. But if you have a look at the end of here, you can see the um, the voltage and everything else. So let's plug in a heater. All right, that's going. We've got about 30 amps going out there, which is what the BMS is rated for. Um, don't know if it's continuous though. <laughs> we'll soon find out. 432 watts. Lovely amount of heat coming out of there. So what I want to do really is to see how hot this is actually getting. It's getting warm. I can feel some warmth there, definitely. See what the temperature is. It's not, um, it's not getting particularly hot, but I mean, that's sort of fine really. I mean, it's hot, actually hotter down the end here than these ones down the bottom, but 
I reckon that'd be okay. We'll test it. We could always just stick some holes in there for like ventilation or something. Right, it's back together then. We've even stuck a bit of carbon film on that side. I'm gonna do the rest of it soon. But so I stuck this back on nice and tight. This tape is flipping insane. If you if you want a sort of good quality high power tape, I don't know what it's even called actually. I think it's Profix by uh I don't know, it might be it's one of the big names, I can't remember what it is, but it's insane. Like, you can literally pick that up by that. Look, that's just crazy stuff. Anyway, I'll give it a full discharge test in the car and see if the um the BMS melts. <laughs> right, I'm on the GoPro to make things a little bit easier. Sorry about the audio. Um so we've got the heater down here, all ready to go. I'm gonna get that plugged in. The other heater's running down there on my feet. Yeah, so this is gonna meet Sarah for lunch. Just keeping the edge off nicely. Right, I'm here then. So far, so good. Still going strong. It's upside down. It's only down to about 14 volts, so got plenty of power for the way back. Nice little spot of lunch, got the heaters on, time to rip home. And we're back, this is still going, 13 volts it's down to now, still kicking out 350 watts. Oh. Right, so I left the camera running to see where the, the battery actually cut out so I could get an idea of whether you know it's actually working. Um, and it cut out 12.6, 12.06 volts. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's basically three volts a cell, isn't it? So like, if it's a four cell pack, 36912, that's 12 volts, just over 12 volts. So that means that all cells must be pretty much in balance because if one was actually to go too far lower, it would actually cut off before the others. Um, is that right? So yeah, I mean, basically it means that all the cells are kind of hitting that kind of level at the same, about the same time, um, down to 12 volts. So the three volt cutout works on the BMS, that's great. It means you can just, you know, let that just run and it will just cut out right at the bottom end. Also the way I've wired it up is this display just turns off as well. Um, when the BMS basically cuts out. So right now, there's no way of turning this back on without actually connecting it back up to the charger. So let's do that, and then um, we'll find out exactly how much we'll put in when we put it on charge. I think what's gonna happen is because there might be like a little voltage on the actual charger, when even though it's just sitting there, I think it might turn the BMS on, yeah, it does. So there you go. It's actually kept the data as well, 320 watt hours. And so 13.72, so it's raised up, it's raised up to 13.72. Um, so there, let's put it on charge then. So four cells, balance advised. Of course, we've got one in there, so it don't matter too much. So if we get all scientific and say 320 watt hours at what? I don't know, like an average of, I don't know, maybe we tried, if we said 13 volts, um, that gives you 24, 0.61 amp hours, so, so it's about, and that's what, I mean, it's supposed to be a 25 amp hour battery, so that's about right. I mean, even if you did it at 320 watt hours divided by, um, I don't know, like what, 14.4, or say something like that, so 22, comes down to 22.2 watt hours. I mean, this is the thing we're working out watt hours because you never know the actual voltage. It's like the voltage under load. So the more you draw from it, the harder you pull, the less watt hours you're theoretically gonna get out of the battery um, because of internal resistance and everything else like that. So if you're, if you're discharging at like a really low rate, then you're gonna obviously see more, more energy. But I'm happy with that. I mean, this has done probably like 20, nah, it must have done more than that. It's probably done like 50 cycles now. Um, just balance charging and then discharging. And then I've basically just been disconnecting this when it reaches the lowest point. And some, a couple of times I haven't seen it. And it's gone down to like, I don't know, like 10 or 11 volts, which is a bit too low for my liking. But all's good anyway, I'll let this charge up and we'll see what we put in. So guys, anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Hope you've enjoyed it, finding out more about this stuff and BMSs, it's all really interesting. It's all sort of heading towards, you know, the bigger stuff. 
and um, you know I just want to keep this stuff fresh in my mind and you know really start to kind of you know push things forward like next year is definitely going to be definitely going to be interesting year I feel like I said that like the end of last it's crazy how quick time has gone like it's just just mad but I mean this year yeah loads of, loads has happened like with the e-bike stuff the e-bike store um, there's some really cool stuff coming um, for that it's particularly on the lower end as well because I know there's a lot of people building I'm helping quite a lot of people build bigger bikes and stuff like that but what I want to get into is the kind of lower end the kind of accessible transport because the battery prices are coming down a bit um, you know motors and, and speed controllers all that sort of stuff are getting more advanced for the price so I think yeah next year is going to be the one where sort of personal um, transport and stuff is really going to take off properly like mainstream I think um, so hopefully we can be kind of a part of that and, and all that side of things but anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed it all and um, happy Christmas and a new year and I've said it before in the last one um, but yeah have a good one get some chill time in see the family or friends whoever you've got around you make sure you spend time with them and I'll catch you in the next video guys